Okay, guys, thank you for tuning in. I've decided to throw in a little interview with Drew and Vitor regarding the new Pillar Balboa, which is a, a rework. Can I say that rework is a, is a, is a valid word for this? Uh, in our tokenomics uh, kind of like model, right? And um, trying to get uh, more and more focused uh, and, and engaged with the community in all levels of Pillar. Um, so, Drew and Vitor are here. They are the the people to talk about this stuff. So, welcome, guys. Ex excited to uh, introduce this to the Pillar community. I think this is going to be a, a big change and one that's going to... It's a natural evolution of um, our ethos and focus as a company being on community first and, and building something that can span a, a wide uh, demographic appeal and an interest beyond just this like crypto niche that so many of us are focused on. It's a quite a exciting moment for us. Uh, if, you, if you go look back at the gray paper, when, when we started Pillar, we, we talked about a lot how Pillar would work. Uh, we talked about self-management and empowerment and flat hierarchies. Uh, a lot of these experiments, some of them panned out, some didn't. Uh, we dabbed with more traditional company structures like our Swiss foundation, fully regulated and so on. Uh, and now we're coming time to go back to the, to, to the roots and, and revisit the, the way we work and operate the company uh, in, in this flat, inclusive and open manner. First question I have for you guys, why is it important for us to have a community-run uh, governance? I think the best way to think about this is the project itself has, it's here because of the community. You know, the ICO itself allowed for um, a, a just shy of 9,000 individuals, um, which was at the time uh, one of like the largest distributions of um, uh, token investors, holders, um, and at uh, two and a quarter ETH, 2.25 ETH, one of the uh, lowest average uh, contribution amounts uh, of any project too, meaning we were a project that was mainly grassroots funded by directly by individuals, not by VCs or huge whales. Um, we, in, in our corporate structure, we are uh, an open source Swiss foundation working in collaboration with the uh, Pillar Pillar AG, which is based out of London, which is managed and run by a product council, which in and of itself is like a democratic council of a variety of individuals who make product decisions. Uh, we've consistently held our um, general meetings uh, semi-annually, disclosing financials, disclosing product decisions and progress. And th this ethos of really putting the community first um, and bringing them into the conversation as much as possible, we can actually use the technology as well as the token itself as the vehicle to extend this all the way to on-chain governance and actually allow our community to participate in the future direction of the product and to be rewarded for their participation as well. Um, and so I think it's just a, a natural fit and an evolution of, of our goals in our as a project as well as our ethos we can think about the ethos we can think about the company structure and um, all, all the things we've been preaching uh something to to maybe to think about is also the, the economic interests uh to make sure that the people who run the company are the people who benefit from the token uh so ha having there's to be no difference between the people who funded the company which are the token holders and, and the people who actually run the company. Uh, and we can say we do that in a light manner because you know, I'm all, I, I believe everyone that uh, has a managerial point in Pillar at, at this moment, it's a token holder, uh, but we need to make this stronger. And more, more than less, make this link indissoluble. Uh, this link needs to, to stay on forever. Uh, the direction the company must run is the direction that the token holders will benefit from. Uh, this benefit can be in a myriad of ways. It can be both a benefit of having this project do exactly what I want to do as a user. So I want to vote for that features. Uh, can be material benefits. 
I believe this is the best thing that can the project do to increase adoption. Uh, but uh, essentially, is uh, the interest between the people running the project and the interest of the community must be one and same. Um, and this this essentially uh, breaks down this 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 border between who are the people running the project and who are the people who are the tokens. It just make them one and the same, which is the position uh, you want to be in. How how does this this um bigger focus on the community run governance would affect Pillar as a company? It's an interesting uh, conversation because most of the um, DAO applications thus far have been have sat at a, at a protocol level and the requirements when you're talking about a protocol and when you're talking about like a product are entirely different. Um, there needs to be an, an entity that handles publishing contracts to with Apple and Google. There needs to be a company that uh, is like has a financial entity for a variety of things, taxes, all all these variety, you know, these things um, operationally. But um, there are ways uh, in how we've been structured and how we're going to be um, creating this uh, community interaction, as well as this bringing this DAO to, uh, community run governance in uh, concert with the foundation itself that will allow the voice of the community to influence the direction of the, that entity itself um, and possibly even uh, enable individuals to get directly involved in working with that entity um, should they sh should they so desire or should the other members of the community so desire um, there might be some amazing designers developers marketers out there that they themselves can uh, material materially uh, uh, benefit or increase the value of the project or, or bring value to the project beyond just get, giving a vote or making a suggestion and that's something that we want to enable too so you know thinking back to the beginnings of pillar and, and this volunteer idea that we had um, that left a sour taste for a lot of people I think this is the proper way to actually create a structure to enable this in a way that is actually has a value um, aligned incentive, mutually beneficial for the person volunteering or committing to the project in the form of tokens and rewards and benefit. Um, and that's materially and professionally as, as well as, um, yeah. So it's all, all, all those things considered, I think, um, we're gonna see a, a shift over the next couple of years in how the company structure exists and what that means. And um, I anticipate that could be in the form of um, not just the direction taken by that company, but possibly even the resources involved um, and, and the, the structure, the, the formation of that thing, uh, how, how we continue to act, the, you know, it's, it's hard to project out exactly what those things mean, but I do believe there will be uh, an effect. And our goal is to actually enable that, is not to prevent, the, like to keep the, the community separate and then throwing ideas and feedback to us that we're actionably, uh, that's how likely it's gonna start. But we want to increase and lower those barriers and as much as are legally uh, feasible. Um, and efficient that without losing efficiencies too in, in an operational standpoint because uh, obviously these types of um, you know decentralized governance uh, situations can also make they can reduce productivity and they can increase uh, inefficiency if not done thoughtfully yep you also don't want to go to jail so uh, yeah. I spent my uh, afternoon talking to our lawyers in Switzerland actually uh, trying to understand the implications of uh, these open governance structures have into the Swiss uh, foundation regulations. Swiss, there's a, Switzerland, there's a regulatory body for foundations uh, sits in Bern. So it's trying to understand uh, what we can do and what we can do. And, and this takes a bit of work, right? Because you can't really go to a lawyer and ask that. We need to talk and try to explain and, and see if they can get it. And and understand what we can do and what we can do. Predicting what the changes are going to be is, is very, very hard. 
especially we are not in control of these changes. So we're opening the gates to wherever that next structure is going to be. Uh, my personal goal is this governance structure must be able to fire me uh, if I'm not being good enough to the project. Uh, I think that's the litmus test for me. Uh, you need to be able to to fire a founding member because uh, that, that's that's the litmus test. Uh, the community must be able to to dictate uh, the operational structure. Uh, at the same time, you know, the people who run the operational structure at Juro's community need to be empowered enough so they can keep it an efficient machine. Right. I mean, yeah, we're we're sitting in a, a exciting opportunity. As far as we understand um, and are aware, this is the first will be the first community run wallet you know, community run product in that sense. And we're leading by example. So um, we're through, through our actions, I hope that there will be a million more experiments uh, along these lines, but we also are gonna be setting that stage for um, how this works. I, I fully anticipate that we're gonna have some challenges, some hiccups um, and some successes and wins. And this learning is going to help to benefit this uh, growth in uh, ch and change in governance structures that benefit uh, communities and, and groups beyond just like the, the a centralized entity. Yeah, and and maybe going back to the like the the, the product vision and how the Zito side to the product, uh, we often talk pillar about being like personal dot store, personal dot locker. Uh, which means th this is a, a major app. This is your interface with different types of services. So we're building these economic rails where you can do the, you know, blockchain payments and sovereign payments. We often talk about sovereign identity. Uh, so in the sense that you we can also build this infrastructure so you can interact with services in in a, in a sovereign way. Uh, and I I do think essentially if you want to be a sovereign individual, uh, you need to not only on your data, you need to own the infrastructure that allows this data to exist. 100%. So uh, I do believe strongly that owning your wallet, not being owned by uh, a VC, not being owned by a company is actually an important part of the product vision. This is a self-sovereign individual. This is an individual that not only owns his data, owns his tokens, he owns the whole infrastructure that lets him use those. Um, so will the community be deciding everything that goes in the app or will they vote on like add add-on features, upcoming uh, capabilities of the app based on what uh, we as a team put out there and say, hey, these are the options. Uh, you can vote now on what you want or is a mix of both. Yeah, it's likely to be a mix of both. I mean, um, this isn't a thing that just like overnight will switch. Uh, that's something we all have to become aware of. The reality is we're going to continue to execute against uh, our roadmap and our product vision as we've put out there. Uh, what's also great is through like in the current um, application now, the community can actually suggest features and vote on which features they think are most important or that they'd like to see next. And this has been something that we've constantly kept in mind and used to drive uh, prioritization of development as well as the roadmap itself. Um, and we're really just adding a layer to that. And um, the goal is to empower them to decide you know I mean ideally my best case scenario by uh, this winter, I'm not, you know, working with the team and we're not going to be putting out and saying, this is the roadmap. Maybe I'll be talking about it, but that will be di directed or informed by these conversations we're having in our new discord community and by everybody saying, you know, this is what we want to see, uh, possibly even having some, some of the first votes and, and on-chain um, governance around, you know, this one feature or, or a direction towards DeFi more, or a direction towards DAOs more, or a direction towards, you know, identity, like let's go all in, let's figure it out. Um, so that this is likely to be a, an ebb and flow, um, I think uh, is the best way to, to think of it. Um, 
and but the the hope is that yeah they'll the token holders themselves will be entirely in uh control of choosing that direction that includes uh the pillar itself as an organization as a token holder that includes the members of pillar uh that are currently involved and as well as our community so that includes many of our partners who are token holders who have helped us to get to this point and contributed to making our product what it is today so um you know it'll be a combination of all these um actors to work together and and drive the path forward so the, there, there's something to think about that money talks uh, there's no power greater than controlling the budget and, and this is an empowered governance structure this governance structure is receiving the crude fleets from the platform so yeah if pillar london is not delivering a feature that community really wants in a reasonable amount of time because i don't know it's busy it doesn't have enough people just hire someone else to do it and the platform has full power to to actually do that this is the ultimate freedom it's beyond just um choosing which features it's about even choosing the individuals the agencies the teams um to actually uh, execute on those as well um it's choosing the platforms by which we market it's choosing the focus geographically maybe we want to put more emphasis on like uh, latin american markets you know there's a, a variety of different um it it's really opens up um the the influence and the effect that the token holders can have like across the board it's it's a, a much more than just suggesting things and and or voting on a list that we provide uh i expect that to be you know an ongoing conversation and to to take a moment like we have to recognize that even in uh, implementing these new structures and and informed and empowered by technology you know smart contracts all these things the tech only takes us so far just cuz we put these things in place doesn't mean they happen right away we still have a fundamental human coordination challenge ahead of us and that's why it's so important that we start talking more that we have a conversation that we really start to engage each other and uh about where where we want to see this go the benefits um not and not just i want to see digibyte cuz i hold digibyte i want to see litecoin cuz i hold litecoin it's making a strong case why a a coin or a cryptocurrency should be included making a strong case for why a feature should be included because um that's really what's going to drive the rest of the community to understand support and get out, get behind that ideally by, by the time it comes to voting or deciding on things the conversation has already played out and everybody has had their opinion so we're already in alignment so it's it's less of a okay everyone make their vote now and more of a we're all we're all aligned that we want to do this let's push on it um and that's it's more of an organic thing if that makes sense to understand the the product is as strong as the community that builds it so uh if if good social features from the beginning uh and uh, and we need to 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 make sure the products and the community are almost one and the same that we reach a consensus on what the product should be in our community and this evolves the product and that's essential for them and that's a lot easier said than done and so yes. you know this is the challenge we we've, we've put in front of ourselves and we're excited to to take it on so yeah uh, lo- lots of people talk about freedom but you know making people free is actually uh, is quite a hard problem so you you've you've touched upon this uh a little earlier drew um but um i'm curious to 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 know how how does this uh, community run governance structure will affect um things that we are already planned from the beginning uh for the for the app for the platform um namely the personal data locker we have an opportunity here possibly to bring identity into the conversation at a product level that actually makes sense is is functionally beneficial um f- as a result of this this change um regarding all the things on our road map uh past suggested and recently um you know proposed those are all on the table um 
I think that they're, the path we're taking um, is still in line with the goals of the project. I hope the goals of the token holders, I obviously can't speak for everyone, but um, this mixture now on the release, uh, the recent update and release of the Smart Wallet V2, um, updates to the uh, Pillar Payment Network, the amazing u user experience upgrades and, and additions we've made based on your feedback. You guys have already been helping to shape the product in, in substantial, tangible ways um, based on that feedback. Uh, and so all those things are up, up, to, up to the community to, to help decide. So if there's a strong voice that says, we don't want to do anything about it, like, or we don't care about DeFi, that's obviously going to be considered and we're probably going to pull things. It's unlikely, but um, you know, I think uh, a change in the prioritization of where we were going or what we maybe thought was the right priority is definitely a likelihood. Yeah, uh, I'll go a bit further. I don't think we can pull off the, the PGL uh, without this change. It, Makes if, sense, yeah. Yeah, if you actually go and, and, and just Google personal data store, personal data service, personal data locker, see, there's a lot of people talking this for the last 15 years. Why no one has pulled this off? Because aligning interests is very difficult. Yes. The moment you own your data, uh, the services have no interest of using this data off you uh, because they're, they're losing money because they make money out of uh, mining data, for example. Uh, with this, we're tackling essentially large-scale coordination problems. So let's say now you're a company that owns some amount of pillar and you benefit from an extended use of the ecosystem, you do have a reason to support the pillar data locker. So uh, the personal data locker is not only a technical problem. Uh, there are many ways to implement it. Uh, some are more technically challenging, some are easier. Uh, well, but it, it, Essentially, there are ways to, to work around it. You can see uh, Team Berners-Lee, the whole great the internet's working on it. Uh, plenty of people around the world working on it. But uh, the biggest trick to pull this off is aligning interest to make sure personal dot store happens. So I do believe that tackling this alignment problem, this economic alignment problem, uh, we might, maybe if we're looking so for the whole world, but uh, I do believe we, we have enough pool to at least solve it for an ecosystem that circulates around this platform and that benefits from using the personal data locker. And hopefully set the example for this to become a, a mainstream idea concept, whether our uh, implementation of that becomes the standard or not. Uh, we hope to at least spur that conversation. There is a section of the blog post which will be linked in the description of this video that says about rewarding long-term token holders. Is that uh, what, savings account reward system? What is, what does that mean? That's easy to understand. Uh, and that, that was a worry that was uh, put forward towards us many times. Uh, if you look at the original uh, gray paper, we sold uh, about, I believe, a quarter of all the possible 800 million tokens. Um, and that was on purpose. The idea was to create a reserve at the time. And, and, and there's this worry that if we simply unload all these remaining tokens that are going to be unlocked from the mid of this year to part of them in the mid of this year and some of them in about seven years, uh, this is going to dilute value, right? Because uh, you're going to bring the market down. Because So the first thing is to hold a, a very tight control of this to empower the community to make their own decisions. Again, we're not the one to dictate, but make sure whoever takes the decision are the token holders themselves and to make sure they're empowered to make the decisions where they use these tokens in a way that do not dilute their value. This might be actually burning all these tokens. Uh, this might be keeping some of them as a budget for the governance structure uh, is not us to dictate, but to empower the token holders to make their choices, to use this in a way that preserves the value they have of their tokens. It's, it's hard to have a productive conversation about uh, community governance and empowering people and letting them have a voice in 
dictating the future of the product development, marketing, whatever it may be, when there's kind of this elephant in the room of a, a huge supply that's going to be released and given into, you know, to the board or to the AG or whoever it may be, because the, the kind of in the back of uh, everyone's mind, it's just like, well, wh what happens there? So I think first and foremost, uh, to focus there um, as a as a, a first effort um, makes a, a lot of sense uh, because we can uh, basically head that conversation off right away, get everyone on the same page in an agreement. They like Vitor said, maybe we burn that like final supply, that final distribution, I should say. Um, and so now that's off the table, and we can focus on what's important, which is you know building the product how we distribute and uh, you know, capture value uh, in a way that benefits the token holders uh, collectively. And there's no concern about uh, a, a future distribution or a, a supply injection that could uh, really disrupt all that work. Um, so to close this off, um, I would like to know from you guys, what are your expectations regarding this, this path that we are taking now? It's gonna be hard. I'll be honest, I think this is gonna be really challenging. Um, I participated in a number of DAOs. Um, they're some of the most exciting and productive conversations and engagements that I've, I've participated in, in my life. Um, I've learned so much about uh, human psychology and, and uh, coordination and the challenges of human coordination that this has plagued humanity for centuries basically since the birth of modern civilization um and you know there's not a silver bullet you know just because we're implementing uh we have this new web3 smart contract code it's not necessarily solving all these issues and that's what where the challenge lies it, it, again fundamentally a human challenge and coordination issue so um yeah i think it's going to be hard but i think the cut it, it is going to result on the best possible outcome and it's it, and any pain will be worth it. Um, and I, you know, I encourage everybody, our existing community who's been amazingly supportive, uh, new people looking to get involved in something like this. Uh, some of the original members of the pillar team, I would love to see them come back and get involved in these conversations and, and, and participate in this vision change because uh, I mean this is I really think this is the core of what so many of us who were involved in the project um, originally still are today wanted to see happen but the mechanism and the tools by which to do so weren't necessarily ready and we weren't as an organization or a project at that time um, ready either. And so, you know, I, at the same time, I think it's gonna be chain, uh, challenging, potentially painful, uh, hard, um, nothing worth, worth doing is easy, right? And I fully expect that this is gonna be really rewarding and um, I'm excited to see it all play out. I'm excited to, to, to be a participant and to, if nothing else, again, um, you know, cause a million more uh, experiments along these lines to occur because I believe this is the direction that we need to focus on and move uh, culturally. I joined Pillar because it was essentially a, a very ambitious vision. Uh, it's a product that was set to change the world. It's supposed to change the way you work. Uh, and at some point we had to go into the defense, right? We, we set back, we made the company streamlined, uh, we cut costs, uh, we built an extremely efficient team. And this is about going a bit in, in, into the defense, is, is building a tighter ship. And we had to build this tighter ship because, uh, you know, some of the initial vision lacked the organization to, to actually deliver the stuff that we're doing now. And, and this is a very exciting time for me because uh, I see this as us going into the offense again. Uh, us back into this madly ambitious vision now with a, a better streamlined focus core team and going back in defense and yeah let's change the world well guys this is all the questions that i had for you um do you guys want to say anything else regarding this i i look forward to seeing everybody on discord um I look forward to hearing everyone's thoughts and ideas and vision. Please join, participate. This only works 
if you participate, um, this is, it, it is stronger, it is better, the result will be a hundred times uh, better if uh, we, the more people we can get involved in participating. The, com the community is why we're here in the, you know, in the tough times that, you know, I must admit, the most th times I thought about giving up, uh, uh, there, there are kind words from the community that made stay. So having this opportunity to, to become, you know, having the foundation become one in the community actually mean, means a lot to me. So yeah, please join up and yeah, let's make this happen. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I know that you guys are working hard and has so much more hard work to be done uh, ahead of you guys. So let's get to it. And um, yeah, like the, the, they said already, I hope you guys uh, listen to this conversation and you join in. Uh, there's a brand new Discord channel for you guys to, to start um, questioning and, and, and engaging in conversation, not only with the team, but also with the community, um, getting to know who we are and who you are. And uh, yeah, let's make this happen together. And uh, see you all later. Cheers. Cheers.